Let's get right to it. Which platform among the many gaming-centric Android devices I own is the best for Call of Duty Mobile? Okay, fair warning. There are a few things we gotta talk about before getting to that. Let's talk about mobile games in general first for a second. Mobile online-based first-person shooters aren't really new. I am, after all, a decade-long modern combat veteran, as you can see from my old tweets shilling the game aggressively, trying to convince my friends to play it with me. I feel like I should add here that not only I didn't really have that big an online presence back then, companies weren't really doing the whole influencer sponsorship thing yet. So when I say shilling, what I really mean is that I was an enthusiastic fan. Nobody was paying me to promote anything. I just needed more targets. For those who weren't really into the cell phone gaming boom of the early 2010s, Modern Combat was essentially a generic ripoff of the Modern Warfare series, right down to the name, obviously. Developer Gameloft was infamous for bringing generic versions of well-known console and PC games to the mobile platform back in those days. You like Halo, right? Well, you will probably like their Nova because, well, it's Halo. Look at it. They weren't really being subtle about it. Ever wish you could play StarCraft on a cell phone? Yeah, probably not, but hey, maybe give Starfront Collision a shot. It's only seven bucks. Maybe something like God of War is more your speed. Well, can I interest you in some Hero of Sparta instead? It's kind of like God of War if you squint. How about GTA? How would you like to play the watered-down, touch-controls-based Grand Theft Auto knockoff cringely called Gangstar? So uh, you got your character there, you move around using this, uh, this uh, an virtual analog uh, button here on the left side, and uh, the uh, right side button is uh, your action, right? So you shoot. I have a couple of guns already. Let me just uh, get into a car here and... Oh, here we go. Oh, crap. Yeah, I joke, but these games were actually pretty fun. And keep in mind, none of the originals being shamelessly copied were officially available in mobile format back then. So, if you want to play an Uncharted ripoff while taking a shit at work, what's the harm? All that taken into account, the online FPS genre has never been pulled off as perfectly as with the recent Call of Duty Mobile. Originally announced at the Games Developer Conference at the beginning of this year to very little fanfare, Call of Duty Mobile didn't get that much traction in the gaming press at the time, which, if Diablo Immortal is any indication of how things could have gone, is actually better. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? <laughs> There are, of course, a few reasons why this might have happened. Whereas Call of Duty Mobile was announced at a small stage during an industry conference that isn't as heavily attended by enthusiasts as some other gaming events, the geniuses at Blizzard trotted out Diablo Immortal at the main stage of BlizzCon, where long-running rumors of new upcoming Diablo-related content had the crowd of mostly hardcore PC gamers in high expectations. These types of gamers would never in a million years get hyped at a mobile gaming announcement, even if it bears the name of a beloved franchise. In fact, especially if it bears the name of a beloved franchise, which most fans would likely see as a slap in the face. That's exactly what happened. Even if the game ends up being pretty decent, which I actually think will end up being the verdict on Diablo Immortal, it was the wrong place, the wrong time, and the wrong audience to announce it to. Also, consider that the Call of Duty franchise gets new titles literally every year, whereas Diablo fans haven't seen a new mainline game in the series since 2008. So obviously, they were expecting a lot more out of this announcement. And to me personally, all of this is made even funnier by the existing relationship between Activision and Blizzard. It's weird to see two outings with such significantly different reactions, but made by what's essentially the same entity in a sort of way. So, Call of Duty Mobile. When it comes to my portable gaming, I go back and forth between my Switch, my GPDXD, and my PSP Go. Lately, my phone is just my Twitter slash Reddit slash Instagram machine. Because my mobile gaming days are mostly behind me, I wasn't all that thrilled to play Call of Duty Mobile. Plus, I'm not a huge fan of the series. It's fine, don't get me wrong, I'm just not crazy about it. In fact, the only Call of Duty title I have any nostalgia towards is World at War, 
because of the Nazi zombies mode. I played the hell out of that with my brother who was a huge zombie buff. But so many of my friends were playing Call of Duty Mobile nonstop. Obviously, I had to check it out. And I gotta say, I am thoroughly impressed by it. Chinese developer Tencent is a mobile gaming veteran, so it should really come at no surprise, but the near console quality of this game is truly outstanding. The graphics are impressive, the online is smooth and massively populated, you got voice chat to trash talk with your buddies, you can set up private matches, there's a pretty decent map selection, there's the ubiquitous battle royale mode, you can customize your weapons, it very much feels like a console game in the palm of your hands. And yes, there are microtransactions. And to be honest, the constant, hey, spend some real money here reminders are annoying, but they only show up when you first boot up the game. They don't really interrupt matches. Considering so far, I've gotten over eight hours of portable online FPS gameplay with my buddies entirely for free. I'm okay with the trade-off. Plus, like I said, they could have been quite a bit more intrusive with trying to push the microtransactions, so I do appreciate the restraint. I spent far, far more on games that didn't entertain me for even a fraction of that time, so I can't really complain. Anyway, here are my Android devices that we're gonna be using for this test. So right here, I have uh, my GPDXD, then my GPD XD Plus, which is pretty much an updated version of the GPD XD. We got the Mochi i7s, which in my recent review, I kept mispronouncing as Moki because I'm stupid. We got the Red Magic 3 right here, and finally the ROG Phone 2. Now let's start here with the least powerful device, and we're gonna move on to the most powerful device. Let's try to get these out of the frame here. This might be the most first world problem Ever. I got too many phones and I can't keep them all out of the frame. Okay, here we go. All right, so my aging yet trusty GPD XD. I love this thing. So the GPD XD, I've done a bunch of videos on it. It's a phenomenal Android device, but it is kind of outdated by now. It has physical controls, as you can see, they look great. You got shoulder buttons here. You got, uh, you can expand the storage right here with the micro SD slot. You have the micro USB to charge. You have mini, I believe, yeah, this is mini. HDMI, it's it's a great little device. Runs Android 4.4 and you can't update it because it's pretty old. Specs wise, this thing is rocking an RK3288 processor. It's a quad core processor with two gigs of RAM and a 600 megahertz GPU. So it's on the lower end of the spectrum of all the devices I own. And you're probably wondering, what about these controls? I understand that Call of Duty doesn't officially support controls and that's true. While it was on beta, it worked with controls and they removed that feature to promote balance between players because if you're, we have people playing with controls and people playing just with the touch screen, it's not super fair. They are studying ways to bring it back. Likely this is gonna affect matchmaking. So if the game detects you're using some kind of controller, it's only gonna match it with people who are also using controllers to make gameplay more balanced. But there are ways around it. I'm gonna to try to go into a match here to show you. So the GPDXD, like other similar devices with built-in controls, has a mapping feature, and you can map the physical buttons to the buttons on the screen. Now, this is kind of you know a janky solution. It works really well for a lot of games. Not so much for this game specifically because of one feature that apparently they removed when they removed official controller support. And that's inverting the Y axis. I'm an inverted player, it's the way I've always played, I can't play any other way. And unfortunately, when they took away the official controller support, they also did away with the option to invert the Y axis. So I'm gonna show you what I mean here. So when you press this button right here, you get this overlay and you can just set the buttons wherever you'd like. So this here is gonna be movements. This one is gonna to be to look around. I want R1 to be uh, the fire button. So this is gonna go right here. I'm gonna move these out of the way because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna set everything up and I got killed, that's fine. I'm not gonna set everything up because I don't really need it. Okay, there we go. So um, L1 is gonna be looking down the sights, R1 to shoot, X is going to reload, A is going to jump, B is gonna crouch. I'm pretty okay with this. This is like quick and dirty, but uh, let's see what we got here. So now we can move like this and you can look around and look at that. Now it's starting to feel like a real game. Look down the sides and shoot. Looks pretty good, feels pretty good if it weren't for the fact that I can't invert the analog. This is gonna be a terrible game because I can barely see what's going on because I'm looking through the monitor here. But I, I believe this should give you a good idea of how it works. You can map all the controls and it, they respond pretty good. I'm not noticing a lot of input lag. Also, you can change, you see how it's set up right here so that one click 
of that uh, button will toggle looking down at the sights, but then I have to click again to turn it off. I can go into the settings and have it so, let's see here, I'm going to go into basic and then there it is. So hold, tap and hold to aim down sights. So now I have to hold and by letting go, it, it, it's more like a, a proper uh, FPS, console FPS. So there you can see. Uh, right here at the bottom, I'm not sure if you can read that, but it says graphic quality low, and that's because of the, uh, those low specs. Let me see if I can get at least one guy here. Oh, I killed one guy. I'm actually pretty proud of myself because I am helpless with uh, non-inverted controls. So like my brain is wired so that I want to look up, I instantly go like this. And as you can see, that spells uh, getting killed in this game. It doesn't work. And this is probably going to harm my... I'm not sure how much this is going to harm my uh, my score in the game. These are probably bots, judging by how poorly they're playing. I probably shouldn't have logged in with my actual account to do these. But yeah, it works really well. I'm really, really happy with this. Even at a low graphic setting, uh, it still looks pretty good. It looks like a premium game. It doesn't feel like a cell phone game. It feels like an actual... like This, this game could have come out on the Vita if anybody bought that system. Come on. Anyway, but it works. This is this is how it works. This is how you'd work with uh, controls. You can map all the buttons to everything. You know, swap weapons here. Uh, actually, let's do that. So, like, let's put the D-pad to swap my weapons. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to save. And now the D-pad swaps my weapons. Not bad, right? Pretty good. Look down the sights. Swap weapons. Look down the sights. Shoot. Pretty cool. So that's the GPD XD. I like it. I like it a lot. I would like it a lot more if you could invert the controls here for the uh, right analog. Unfortunately, you can't do that. And that's a problem we're going to have with all the other systems that support any kind of physical control scheme. That's the case with the GPD XD Plus. Now, the GPD XD Plus is slightly faster. With the GPD XD Plus, we're going to have a similar experience. It's a great little system to play this game on provided you can aim with non-inverted controls. If that's your case, if you think inverted players are weird, you're probably, you want to get something like this. This is pretty cool. This is a great way to play um, Call of Duty Mobile. Now, of course, the GPDXD doesn't have support for a SIM card, so you'd have to create a hotspot with your phone every time you wanted to play if you're out and about, but you know, not the end of the world. So here, same deal. Click here to aim down the sights. Shoot here. It is, but again, that non-inverted oh my god this feels so weird it's really hard to play the way i'm doing because i'm looking like i said through the monitor and yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get any kills but same situation going on here very similar experience with the added benefit of course like the gpdxc plus also has bluetooth support so you can play your call of duty with mapped out controls and listening to your audio through bluetooth headphones that's pretty cool so that's the gpd xd plus now we move on to the Mochi i7s. Now this thing is a cell phone. The biggest advantage here is that this takes SIM cards. This has the added advantage of you being able to play it without needing to create a hotspot with your phone first. You can pull this out of your bag or whatever, sit down and play Call of Duty Mobile wherever you are. Now Mochi has a similar function here to map out controls, the physical controls to the buttons on the screen. It's mapped out here as you can see I already did that in advance. And this feels really good. The position of the screen, the weight of the device itself, the size of the screen, it's a beautiful screen. The d-pad feels pretty decent. It's a little clicky but it's nice. This feels nice. Like this feels like a Vita. It's just slightly bigger than a Vita. This game makes me resent the fact that I got used to playing inverted. Like maybe as a kid if I had tried, because inverted just felt more natural to me, if I had tried to push through that and train myself to like play uh, with non-inverted controls, I'd be having a blast, oh my god. This feels like an actual proper console game, even more than before. Oh, I killed somebody. Okay, I'm already happy with that. Come on, come on, just get those guys. That's got to be a bot. Like, I can't believe I actually got both of them. It's got to be a bot. One thing I forgot to mention really quick, the GPD XD Plus has a MediaTek 8176 processor with a 700 megahertz GPU and four gigs of RAM. So it's double the RAM of the GPD XD and a slightly better GPU, but the graphics look about the same. 
Now, when it comes to the Mochi i7s, this has a Snapdragon 710 with six gigs of RAM, so a little bit better, and an Adreno 616 GPU with 650 megahertz. It looks pretty good. I'm not getting that low graphics setting message I was getting. Oh my goodness, I'm dead. Yeah, that's a bot for sure. That's a bot. As I was saying, I'm not getting that uh, low graphics warning here that I got on the GPDXD, so there is that. So this is Call of Duty Mobile running on the Mochi i7s. I really like the fact that this is a legit cell phone, so you can just slap your SIM card in there, take this out, and play games online, and do whatever you do on the cell phone. Now for something a little more traditional. This right here is the Red Magic 3, a gaming cell phone I reviewed recently on my channel. You can see the flickering here on the screen. This doesn't happen in real life, like I mentioned in my review. This is an artifact created by the refresh rate of the phone. So this phone has something very interesting, which is, like I mentioned in my review, shoulder buttons. I'm not sure if you can see, because like this doesn't create a lot of contrast, but there's these two areas right here. These work as shoulder triggers. So let's go into the game and let's see. The Red Magic 3 runs on a Snapdragon 855 processor, which is pretty decent, and eight gigs of RAM and an Adreno 640 GPU. So this is a pretty powerful phone. I like that it has a little LED strip. I turned it off just to conserve battery, but as you can see, the Red Magic logo pulsates, and there's a little LED uh, strip here. You can configure however you like with the colors and behavior and stuff like that. This is, if you don't wanna go with something like dedicated for games or a phone that is admittedly pretty awkward to use on a day-to-day -day setting, this is a pretty good option. So let's go start the game here. All right, now we're playing it in a more um, more precise way because I don't have to deal with non-inverted controls. Now look down the sides and I have it set up so that touch looks down and then touch again to deactivate. And this looks much better than, oh my goodness, I got killed. This already looks, I'm not sure if it's visible in the video, but this already looks noticeably better than the, on the other devices uh, because of the better specs. So let's see, oh, I thought I saw somebody there, nope. Uh oh, uh oh. Somebody coming from this side, yep. Ah. I'm usually slightly better than this. It's hard to play and, and shoot a video at the same time. But here we go. Okay, this feels really good. Like, those sh uh, shoulder buttons make such a big difference in comfort and in this feeling like a, an actual proper game. Like, holy crap. Oh, ah, geez, not fast enough. And also, the phone vibrates slightly when you touch those buttons. So that, uh, oh, 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 oh. oh. Come on. Oh no. So this is the game running on a Red Magic 3. I gotta say, I like this quite a bit. It's uh, Those buttons make a big difference when it comes to uh, gameplay. Obviously, it's not very clear here because I'm sucking. This game is gorgeous, man. Like, holy crap. Come on. Oh, you're dead, you're dead. Oh my God, he's good. Now, finally, the ROG Phone 2. Now, this phone is an incredible beast. This is rocking a Snapdragon 855 Plus with 12 gigs of RAM and that same Adreno 640 that the Red Magic 3 also sports. One of the big differences here is that this thing has a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. Now, obviously, yes, the GPD XD Plus also has a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, but look at the size difference. Plus, this is an actual phone. This is just for playing games, so this is massive. One other interesting thing is that the ROG Phone 2 comes with this right here the Aeroactive Cooler 2. This snaps to a connector port here on the side of the phone and basically helps keep the phone chilled while you're playing. There's a fan right here and it helps draw out the heat from the processor. This also gives you a headphone jack, which normally would be right on the side here. It's not at a terrible position. You can still play really well, but you know, it's gonna, you're gonna have to navigate around that. It's much more comfortable to have that at the bottom here and I really appreciate that. This also puts another connection port here on the bottom so you can play the game and have your headphones at the bottom here and you can be charging the phone without the wires interfering with gameplay. Like the Red Magic 3, this also has touch sensitive buttons on the top here. This thing is my go-to when it comes to Call of Duty Mobile. This is like, I'm gonna unplug this because I don't really need it right now. Let's unplug that here, okay. Just like the Red Magic 3, the ROG Phone 2 has this game mode right here, which is called Game Genie. You swipe from, from this side of the screen and then you have a bunch of features here, including like say air triggers. 
which are these buttons right here. It's showing on the screen what they're activating. Okay, so let's just save that. Let's go into the game. You can also do live streams right from the device itself with face cam. Like it uses the front facing camera to capture your face and your face shows up as a little hovering window here. It's pretty impressive. Oh my, like this is beautiful, my God. It feels so smooth, it's like buttery smooth. I'm gonna change that, uh, uh, yeah, tap and hold to aim down sights like that. Okay, yeah, that's that's that feels better. Okay, let's go. I like how matchmaking doesn't take any time at all. It's so quick, there's so many people playing. Oh, here we go. Okay, there we go. Get out of there, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there. Oh my goodness. There's always snipers up there. Oh, geez. Ah, uh, so close. This is great. Like, I can honestly say this is the best mobile gaming experience I've ever had. Playing Call of Duty Mobile on the ROG Phone 2 is like, this is better than what the Vita was at its heyday. Like, this is outstanding. Oh, there they are. They're gonna try to flank us. Let's get down there, let's get down there. They're trying to flank us for sure. There they are. Like clockwork. There's gotta be at least one more in there. What did I say? I knew it. Yes. Let's get up here. Let's let's go up. Let's go. Oh, there they are. Sorry, buddy. All right, I feel like you got the idea. If I had to choose one of these devices to be my daily Call of Duty mobile driver, I think it would be the ROG Phone 2. It has the shoulder buttons, which they call air triggers. It has the massive battery. It has the processor, the RAM. It comes with Aero Active to cool the device, and it has the charging port here at the bottom and the headphone uh, jack. The only downside, really, to, there's, there's two downsides to the ROG Phone 2. One is that it's a relatively heavy phone, definitely heavier than my iPhone 10, which I'm used to, but then again, it's a much smaller phone, so that's understandable. And the battery is more than twice the size, so I get it. And the price, it's definitely not an affordable phone by any stretch of the imagination. It is a niche product for people who really like mobile gaming. So it is a pretty hefty investment, but that being said, it's by far, hands down, the absolute best device you can own to play a game like Call of Duty Mobile. And I just, I hope that there are more games like this in the future so I can use this thing for more than just Call of Duty Mobile. All right, this was a much longer video than I thought it was going to be. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're new here, consider subscribing. That helps the channel out a lot. Leave me a comment, drop a like. Follow me on social media, Twitter and Instagram. I'm very active on both and I'm always posting behind the scenes stuff there. Maybe you'll like it. And that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done. You can set up private matches. There's a pretty deep. F I get that's so good.